Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe and today I'm going to walk you through the entire process of creating this Vikings composite from stock photography. All right, we're going to build this nice Vikings composite out of different photographs and I'm going to walk you through all the steps. Now we're going to begin by going to Adobe Stock and grabbing the photos. Now, as you can see here, I've grabbed a few already, and I'm actually gonna show you the process of how I got those. So we just type in here, Viking, and notice what we get some different results up here. So we could see some cool Viking warriors that maybe we might wanna use, like maybe this guy here. And what we can do is we can right click and we can choose to view details on the web. And that's because I want to go into more detailed view than what I can see there. All right, so let's click here. We're going to see more. And we can see more of this particular guy. So you know what? I might use this guy. I might not. But let's click on here and we can save this. Notice you can create a collection here, this little library. And what I did is I created a library and I named it Vikings Composite. And I can easily just kind of save that there. Or I can just go up here and type in Vikings. Viking Warrior actually looks pretty good. Let's choose that. And here we have a lot more options. So going down here, we can see there's a lot of different Viking warriors that we could look at. There's the one we were looking at a second ago. We could go down, we could look at other ones. Like maybe we like this one. And if we want to select it, we could just select it or we could choose find similar. And let's have a look at similar ones. And we can see there's a lot of different types there. So essentially what we're doing is we're just grabbing the ones that we think are a possibility and I'm just clicking here to save the preview right there to that library. And I'm just going to close this out and we're going to go here inside of Photoshop and I'm just going to close that search down. And we can see there's the different ones we've been looking at and we can double click on these to open them. And looking at these, you know, maybe there's a possibility we might want to use one of these. Okay, so if we want to license an image, we just right click and we choose license image. And what that does is it gets rid of that watermark right there and it gives us the high resolution image that we can work with. You'll notice it takes a second for it to update. And then we've got this guy here. I'm not sure whether or not we're going to use him. So we're not going to license him right now. We can kind of try him out a little bit later on. And then if we decide to use him, then we will. So right now, this is kind of boring. We want to juice it up a little bit. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this one here and I'm going to drag this in and I'm just going to hit OK. Now we could use this for the background plate and actually I considered doing that before, but I feel like there's just maybe a little too much going on. It's a little too busy. So what we can do is we could just take elements from it. So say for example, we want to just maybe grab this part here. We could do that. We could just make a selection around there. This is using the quick select tool right now. And we can select around that area. I just want to choose select and mask. And this is where we can get a better edge here. We're just going to play around with the radius a little bit. And you know what? That's not looking bad at all. And notice we can adjust the transparency here to see where we're looking. Is we're going to change this to a new layer with a layer mask. And we're going to click OK. And that's just going to kind of mask that out. And we just drag that out over here. Let me delete that. So this is what we're going to be using. So this is not bad because we're kind of building up this little bit of the plate on the background. So we just want to blend this in though. So I'm just going to grab the brush here and I want to choose a soft edge brush. And notice we've got the mask there. So if we paint with white, it will show more. If we flip it around and we paint with black, this will actually hide part of that. And this is what we want to do. We just want to kind of blend this in. There we go. Now remember, a lot of the time when you're compositing, you don't have to make everything perfect because all you want to do really is just sell this to your viewer and uh, just sell the illusion basically. We want to do maybe something more with the sky. So we've got a nice dark sky here. Why don't we drop this in? because we definitely want to have that, you know, moody kind of uh, thing going on here. So what we're going to do is just go in and we're going to select the sky here. So let me just grab my quick select tool. And 
we're going to go and select this layer hitting the alt or the option key and that'll take away so notice what i'm doing is i'm actually using two layers right there to make the selection and uh, you'll see that right there and let me show you how i did that again so we're selecting the background layer and this is using this layer here and i'm using the alt or the option key right now to just kind of refine this selection a little bit so what we're trying to do is just get nicely selected around there around the tops of those hills however if i try to go over this portion it's still going to be working on that particular layer so if i move up to the next layer notice how now it's respecting that particular layer and in that way we can make a little bit of a selection and we want to apply that to the sky so we're going to select the sky layer right now and then we're just going to click here to create a mask let's uh, unlink the sky so we're going to keep the mask there and now we're just going to move the sky up there we go and it's not bad there but what i'm probably going to do is i'm going to create a little bit of a gradient at the bottom so what i can do is actually put hit control g for group i'm going to put that into a new group and i'm going to create a layer mask on top of that there we go and now i can grab my brush and i drop the opacity down maybe 50 percent and i'm just going to kind of paint around the horizon there a little bit There we go. So we're just kind of blending that in. And then it just kind of makes it look more natural. And I don't have to spend a lot of time trying to get the selection perfect over there. So that's kind of like a little little trick you can do. All of this into one group. So I'm just selecting the whole thing. And I'm just going to hit Control G. All right. So that's our back plate right there. All right. So we can do some more things with coloring and all that kind of stuff. And we'll get to that next. So the next thing we want to do is we want to make a little bit of visual interest. So our foreground element is we're going to have this guy here. Let's just drag that in. And this is going to be the guy invading. This is our Viking coming right in. And so if we look at that, let me just make it a little smaller. So that's control T or command T for free transform. We're going to drop that down a little bit. Click it here. All right, we want to get rid of the white. And generally speaking, I don't use this tool, but this is a great time to, believe it or not, use the magic wand. So we're going to choose the magic wand, and we're going to make sure contiguous is turned on. Otherwise, it's just going to pick up the white everywhere. Although we could try non-contiguous for a second and just click. Yeah, see how it's picking up in there and everything like that. So let's hit Control D. So what we're going to do is turn on contiguous, which means that the selections will only be where the pixels are touching. So if we hold down the shift key, we can pick up these other little areas in there. So we're just making those selections, oops, around those areas there. And one up there. All right, looking pretty good. So what we wanna do is we wanna mask those away. We just click on the mask. And if it doesn't quite look right, like it doesn't there, hit Control i or that'd be Command-I for inverse. All right, so you might find that those edges are not looking perfect. We've got a little white fringing and stuff. There's a couple of ways of doing it, but I'm going to show you one of the tricks I love, and that's just Command-Click or Control-Click to select our areas of pixels. And what we want to do is we just want to choke this mask a little bit or just compress it down. So we're going to choose Select, Modify, Contract. And we're just going to do it by two pixels. So what we want to do now is inverse this as command shift I. And now what we're doing is we're selecting around those edges and we're just going to fill those edges with black. So let's just do that now. And black is our background color. So that's control backspace. And if we turn off our selection, you can see we've got nice clean edges now. So what it did is it just removed that two pixel fringe. Now, the positioning of this is not really going to work. We need to flip it around. So we're going to hit Control T for free transform, right click, and then we're going to choose flip horizontal. Great. Now we've got better positioning. Now, if we need to, we can just drop the size of this down a little bit, which I'm going to do. And I'm holding down the shift key to constrain this. And we just want to kind of move this up to, I don't know, about here. So let's have a look and we're going to add 
another picture here. We're going to add our Viking woman. And this will be kind of like our hero. And we're just going to make a selection using the quick select tool. And you've seen me do this so many times. I've got lots of other tutorials where I'm using this tool. So I'm just going to quickly do it right now. And let's just hit Q for quick mask. And this gives me an idea of what's selected and what isn't. Notice we've missed a little bit there. All right, that's looking pretty good for rough selection. Now we're going to go into select a mask and this is where we can fix it. If it looks weird like that, just click invert and make sure we've got the right part selected. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to find the edge, turn on show edge, turn up the radius a little bit, just till we start to see that outline, turn that off. That's going to help immensely. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab this refine brush here. And this is good for things like the hair. So we want to kind of go around here and just kind of make a small brush around the edges of the hair and try and fix that a little bit. And the fur. All right, that's looking pretty decent. So what we want to do now is turn on decontaminate colors, and this helps also with the selection. And then we want to go to a new layer with a layer mask. Excellent. Now we've got our hero there, and we just want to position her. Maybe that's a pretty good position. I kind of like the composition there with her against that. It's looking pretty good. Okay, the next thing we want to do is maybe put some boats in the background. But we did mention this other guy. Let's have a look quickly. And what I'm going to do to see if we want to use him is just do a really, really quick selection. Just a rough selection around here. This is more of an exploratory thing. So let's just go around there. We're just going to grab that. And doesn't have to be perfect because we're just testing it to create the mask all right so we've got our character here and i'm just looking i'm thinking with the scale and everything mm, we could scale them up you know if we wanted to add a second hero in here you know we could easily do that yeah it wouldn't look too bad or maybe we could try putting him in the background maybe smaller Maybe running in from another boat. Let's get the layers panel out of the way there. So we could kind of have them running in over here somewhere. And of course, you know, we drop them down behind the boat. Mm, you know... It's not bad. It's not bad. Okay, so the thing is, if we do decide that we want to use him, all we need to do is we go in here and then we can license that image right there. So if we choose to license it, we can kind of drop him in there. Now, if you don't want to use him, we don't have to license it. And that's kind of the fun thing about working with the stock with the, uh, you know, we can download whatever we want with the watermark and we can test it we can try it we can see if it's going to work for us and uh, we're just kind of testing him right now and notice once it had been updated the watermark's gone now we've got the full resolution image you know what he's not really hurting anything there so you know what i might just leave him there for now and uh, later on, if we decide we want to use them or we don't want to use them, we can add them or delete them. So we have those options. The colors are going to be a little difficult to match, but I just wanted you to kind of see how that works. Okay, the next thing we want to do is we want to add a few long boats in the distance there. So let's just kind of drag this one out here. Okay, and I just added a mask, and I'm just going to kind of drop this off in the background. So I'm going to drag it down behind everything and see what we can do with them. Maybe put them over there so it looks like there's more Viking longboats coming. And why don't we make a copy? 
So I just option dragged, by the way, to make a copy. And I'll drag that one behind it. And we can put that off in the distance. Like there's more than one coming in. And then of course you can just go in here for small brush, soft edge brush here, and you can paint these in for matching them. Okay, so we've kind of got some things going on here. One of the things I want to do on these long boats here is I want to make sure I select that. I'm control clicking to select it. And I'm just going to hit control U for hue saturation. And I'm just going to drop the saturation on that a little bit. Because I want to make it look like it's in the distance and maybe lighten it up a bit more. So that's atmospheric perspective at work right there. So as things go off in the distance, they tend to look a little bit lighter. So we could do the same thing here. Let's grab our back plate. And I'm just going to create a new layer on top of our back plate. And I'm going to make this one our atmospheric perspective. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill it with a mist. Now what we're going to do now is we're just going to choose filter. We're going to go down to render. Clouds. And we'll just let it put some clouds in here. But let me zoom out a little bit and then hit Control T. This is the way I like to work with this. So I hold the Option key. I'm going to drag this out. And it creates more of a misty kind of an effect by doing that. And let's zoom it up. We're going to change the blending mon mode on this. We can try some different blending modes like screen doesn't look too bad. And then we're going to drop the opacity way down because we just want to kind of create some atmospheric perspective. And the background looks like a little bit of mist here and there. So let me create a mask on there, grab a black brush, and we want to make sure that this foreground element is not getting too much mist. Because this is closer and the mist really affects things as it gets further away. And in fact, if you want it to affect some of these other things, we could pull this up a little bit higher in the chain and see how it starts to affect some of our characters here. So. There we go. That's basically how we do our cutouts. Now we want to look at doing a little bit more color toning in here. So let's just do some curves adjustment here. So I'm just going to turn off our hero right now. And we're just going to work with the background plate for now. So why don't we go in here and we're going to add a curves adjustment. And just give it a bit more contrast. Darken it down a little bit. Lighten it up. And the highlights, we're just going for a little bit more of a contrasty kind of a feel. Okay, and let's put our hero back up on the front. So now we might want to do just an overall color and tone adjustment. Now, before we do that, you know, there's a lot of things we could do. One of the things I like to do sometimes is dodging and burning. So I'm just going to hold the Alt or the Option key down. I'm going to put this into Overlay and then click here. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit the B for the brush, going to grab a brush tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose about 20% opacity. I want to make sure I've got a soft edge brush. And then I'm just going to work and start painting shadows because I notice the light direction is coming from here. And that's working because it's light over the edge there. So this is where the light's coming. So shadow will be on this side. So just go around and just paint a little shadow in. Some of it for mood and some of it to kind of shape our image. And then we can paint on some highlights with white using the same kind of techniques. You'll notice I did some different decisions there, and I might add a little bit of a shadow on the boat behind her. Okay, so I'm just going to paint some shadow just directly on there. So I'm going to take the layer of the boat, and then I'm just going to create a new layer above it, and then hold the Alt or the Option key, and what that's going to do is it's going to clip that on there. So if I want to paint with black, see how I can do that? 
So why don't we just quickly just do a little bit of black there. And I'm just going to choose Filter Blur. Soften the edge of that blur significantly, like maybe about there. Then just bring, put this into multiply mode and drop the opacity down. So just give it a little bit of shadow. Okay. Now, finally, we might want to give it a little bit of coloring. So let's give it, give it a solid color, though. I want to give it some kind of a color tint. So let's try blue. We put that into color blend mode, and then we pull the opacity all the way down, and then just give it a little touch. See how it starts to give it that little bit of a color grading? And then what that does is it really kind of pulls things together a little bit, like color-wise. You know, we could try different colors if you wanted to make it more into, you know, the warmer colors. We could do this, and or we could go the other way. You can see we're starting to get something that's starting to resemble something like a movie poster kind of effect. Maybe kind of there is nice. That's I kind of like that. And then the other thing is I'm going to grab a hue saturation adjustment. And maybe just pull the saturation down a little bit to give it a bit more of a cinematic feel. There we go. All right, guys. So there we go. There's our... Uh, composite, you know, kind of has a little movie poster kind of a feel. We, maybe we could put some type up there. Notice I left room for that if we wanted to, you know, do something that maybe says Vikings or something like that. Now, one of the things, bear in mind, I was, as I was teaching this, I was speaking at the same time and kind of rushing through this. When you do one for real, I'll take a little bit more time, zoom in, and get some of those fine details down there. But I do believe that I've got enough of the principles across for you guys to be able to kind of get the idea. Now, you can get your own photographs and put them together and create these kind of composites and upload them to Adobe Stock if you want to sell them. The other thing you can do too is grab 10 free images from Adobe Stock and try some of this compositing out for yourself. It's a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, smash that like button into dust. If you like Photoshop tutorials, hit that subscribe button right now and you'll get a new tutorial from me at least once a week. Add a comment. Let's get a discussion going. What do you guys like? What don't you like? What would you like to learn? And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.